then Prince Andrew stuff. That why was that interview allowed? That made him look oh. bad. Well, again, amateur hour again, right? Who, who gives a good like for that? Amateur hour. I spoke to someone who worked with the royal family, and he says he actually thinks he's smarter than what it is where he can speak out and talk his way out of the situation. But it it just but made him look bad. He couldn't. Yeah, why? I mean, who gives a green light for that? Total disaster. Well, he actually had this courtier who had been working for him forever. This woman called Amanda, and she thought this was going to be a great idea. I mean, that is the worst interview in history. Now, again, this might surprise you. I don't sign up anymore to a lot of the narrative around Prince Andrew. I was very um, negative about him for a long time. That interview was a disaster, right? A total disaster. But I've looked into things much more. This is nothing to do with my own experience. It was well before I had my own experience. I've spoken to a number of his close friends, a number of people um, who have really done huge research into what happened with Andrew and Epstein and his accusers, especially Virginia Dufre. And there is a growing sense that Andrew was set up and that while he may have been unwise to ever have a relationship with Epstein, I mean, what was he thinking? I mean, this guy's a paedophile. What was he thinking? That's unquestionable, right? But when it comes to the claims of Dufresne, for example, they just don't stack up. They do not stack up. And it seems like very much um, she was driven by money. But the problem is, while all of the royal family believe him, so, so you know, like um, the late Queen and King Charles and even William, they actually support Andrew privately. They believe him. Publicly, after that interview, it became just impossible to imagine him coming back into the royal family. And I mean, what a disaster. They actually need him at the moment. But it's impossible. Yeah. How can he come back? You because can't. like you say, just maybe he was just that party guy who loved to party, naive. Yeah, stupid. But again, stupid guy. It's the fact that Arrogant. Epstein was a known paedophile. He yeah. was charged. He was convicted from yes. a maths teacher to this mysterious billionaire, yes. to then owning Epstein Island, one of the biggest yeah. paedophile rings where the flight logs have never been really yeah, yeah. out there but, in the open. But 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 um, why are they only talking about Prince Andrew? Though This is my point. Why are they not talking about Bill Clinton and Bill Gates, who were on that island far, far more than Prince Andrew ever was? Stephen Hawking? fucking old pervert he was and he was an Arab and he used to go to strip joints everything it's, it's nuts yeah. to think that he's and the list is long by the way and listen same as when you look at the Jimmy Savile stuff there's celebrities got photos with Jimmy Savile doesn't mean yep. they're paedophiles yep. either the guy was a high profile name yep. you're just probably happy to get a photo with someone same as Epstein Island maybe people's went there once yes and realised wait a minute this ain't right but if you're going back multiple times like the Clintons like other yep. high profile names something's not right no, exactly. And there should be equity and fairness around it. And remember, th there's a growing feeling, especially in America, that the radical left in America found it much, much easier to pin it all on Prince Andrew and Ghislaine Maxwell, Maxwell, both Brits, rather than having to target the likes of Clinton and Gates. Now, of course... I believe everyone should be subject to due process. But I mean, come on. Do we really think that Epstein committed suicide when he was meant to be on 24-hour watch in a isolation unit where it was impossible to commit suicide? I mean, there is a lot more to that story than meets the eye. So I think Andrew, to an extent... And don't get me wrong, and I don't want this to be taken out of context. I'm not defending him. He's made huge errors of judgment. But I think to some extent, he was he was the easy target. Put it that way. He was the easy target. Yeah, because like you say, it's, it's the meeting of the Epstein. It's that, that interview. I don't think there's ever been evidence on being with kids. I think no. there's been the, the, the video about not sweating and it was at Pizza Express. Mm. It just... It I mean, just that makes him look stupid. That, that was ludicrous. And but, people are going to then think, yeah. nah, what you're covering up. Yeah, but Virginia Dufre has changed her story, remember, multiple times. Was one of the photos edited? Times. That photo was well, edited? Well, Lady Victoria Harvey, who's a good friend of mine, um, 
really good person actually she'd be great great to come on here i think she's, i actually spoke to her a couple yeah of weeks ago. You, you should she's fascinating i i i i i would tell her she should do it because i mean she is convinced you know she would bet her life on the fact that that photo is edited she's an ex of prince andrew she's still friends with him does she have skin in the game yes but as i say i've done a lot of my own research into this and it's not as straightforward there's a lot of murky dealings involving Jufre, some of the other accusers. Remember, they've become very, very rich as a result of this. And who did they know was the person who they could most easily damage? Well, Prince Andrew. And one thing I do know for a fact, by the way, is the reason that Prince Andrew settled with Virginia Jufre, because do you remember there was that payout? And the only reason he did that is because otherwise, the court case was going to overshadow the platinum dive, the, sorry, the platinum jubilee of the queen. It was timed at the at around the same time, and and the queen she was dying at that point, and they all knew she was dying of blood cancer. So, for Andrew to have pressed ahead with that, you know, everyone in the family was just saying, "Settle, settle, settle. Do this for your mother." Do, do you see what I mean? So the Epstein thing as well. Did you think? Epstein had something over him? Well, he definitely had something over him. But, but, Andrew chose to go to New York to stay at his apartment knowing that he was a convicted paedophile. That's wrong. Just to paint a little bit of context to it, though, loads of high-profile people were going around to Epstein's house. He was he was still the toast of New York society at that point. And not all men, by the way. I mean, Katie Couric, who was one of the top, you know, mainstream media journalists in the US. I've interviewed her for my podcast before, you know, host the Today Show, not involved at all in anything sexual, was at the dinner party with Prince Andrew. So it wasn't all to do with sex, if you if you see what I mean. But but Look, why did he go to that meeting? He claimed in the car crash Newsnight interview that he just sort of stood by his friends, but it was an odd one. So did he have something over Andrew? Possibly. Did Ghislaine? Possibly. But of course, she hasn't turned on Andrew even now. So maybe there was nothing to turn on him over. And as I say, I know, look, there's a lot of people who I respect hugely who are absolutely convinced that Prince Andrew is totally innocent of any crime, might be guilty of making some PR errors and doing a terrible interview. But personally, I think there is more to come on the Epstein story, both in terms of Andrew and Ghislaine, but also what else was covered up.